What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Driven Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, Superman. I guess the thing that lifts our spirits, Brian, what Marlon Brando said Superman could be. Was it hope, I guess? I think it was hope, that hope, that light. Yeah, there are great people, Kal-El, they wish to be. They only lack the light to show the way. Show the way. I've sent them you, my only son. Let's see, Brian. We have some updates. Hope has made some comments, Brian. I haven't heard him, so I'm inter interested in hearing what he said. And we have the gun inspirations. And no Comic-Con, Brian. I have my thoughts regarding that. Which one would you like to tackle first? This is where this is where you love James Gunn on social media. This is where he's at his best because he's being an artist, but he's giving you information without giving information. He was asked to list his inspirations for no longer called Superman Legacy, just called Superman. And he put up a bunch of comics and images. And I'd be curious as to your takeaways and themes. But, you know, for me, I would say the two things that really stood out most of all were one, he chose a moment in which Superman talks a suicidal teenager off a ledge as one of his inspirations. I believe that was from All-Star Superman. I like that because it, it reminds me of the scene in the Donner Superman where he saves the cat out of the tree, which I thought was, is like one of those tiny little moments that gets lost in the grand scheme of the movie, but it shows the understanding of Superman's essence and his virtue and why he is an inspiration. And so I looked at that as like a very humanizing, like I remember <clears throat> the core of Superman's identity and it isn't, mm -hmm. you know, it isn't X-ray vision and it isn't flight and it isn't strength. It's, it's that, it's humanity. Yeah. And then the second thing that stood out to me was he really was seemingly through some of these imagery and, and, and the choice in the comics he highlighted, really centering the relationship between mm -hmm. Clark and Lois as being mm -hmm. critical to the success mm -hmm. of this story, which we probably could have guessed. And it goes back to our point of, you know, for better or for worse, I think David Cornsweet is going to be given every opportunity to shine as an actor in this yes. movie. And Gunn is basically telling you him and Rosnahan are being counted on to really carry a lot of the, the narrative and the emotional weight, which is great. If you're going to bet, bet on, bet on your stars, bet on the people, bet on the people you need for the movie to be successful. So those are the two biggest things I kind of took from it. There's a lot of classic imagery as well. So I think Gunn, Gunn is really trying to send that message of classic Superman, classic Superman. Like I get yes. Superman all the way back to action comics, right? Whereas Zack Snyder, he was very open about saying, I love a strong Superman, right? He, that was his, his calling card was, I want Superman to be, to display his strength above all else. I mean, that's a take. That, that was his thesis. Yeah. Gunn yeah. seems to be kind of channeling human side of Superman. Yes, you know, absolutely. Classic Superman. That, that's really what I'm getting for this. What stood out to you and what he posted? He looked as if he'd been crying. He's, he's invulnerable. He's, he's powerful. He does all this, but his mind, what is his, where is his mind? That's what he's, what is he thinking? Right. And it goes back to that conversation we had quite some time ago about his relationship with Lois is that there is something there, but how can you possibly think I can be with you when I can hear all this other stuff going on around me and ignore that? You know what I'm saying? And you can see in that picture, probably tired, mentally, Brian, mentally tired. So yes, you're the, the one that you pointed out with him talking a kid off you know what i'm saying having those conversations you know what it reminds me of what that dude that robbins that dude that he was telling a kid uh, uh i saw an instagram about him. a dude looked like he was you know sort of going through it and he sort of told them how you know you make other people feel and so he's hitting on all the right notes right yeah and i think to the point about all of the imagery, if you look at it, is really Superman centric. And what I mean by that is you don't see Superman punching Doomsday. You don't see, you don't even see Lex. He doesn't even post Lex, really. Lex doesn't appear in the imagery, even though we know Lex is a critical part of this movie. And we'll talk about that in a second. It is a romanticism. It's like a romanticism about Superman. That's kind of, if you look at it, it's like, a, it is like a love letter to the character of Superman more than it is look at what Superman can do. I think if nothing else, 
you're gonna get that. We'll see how well it hits, right? I mean, that's something that can really be off the mark. That can be something that really is on the mark. But there's no question that Gunn is going for that. And that clear, like when I see these other things too, I don't see anything in this imagery that suggests goofiness. I don't see anything in the imagery that suggests comedy, even though that's, you know, we, we're on the lookout for that given Gunn's track record and given Guardians and the Suicide Squad. But none of this, to everything about this to me was dramatic. It was not, it was not light. Every time I read something with regards to what James Gunn has said in terms of what he's done with the story, he says something to the effect that he's never written anything like this before. Is that correct, Brian? Have you heard yeah, something like this? That's what it seems like. That gives me inspiration for what he wants us to feel. Certainly, there's the humor. There's the, you know, whatever. We get that. And that's Rachel Brosnahan told us. Yeah. Rachel Brosnahan told us there would be a sense of humor in the movie. And it has yeah. to be. I mean, he, he, he does have a lighter side. Clark has a lighter side. Yeah. Lois has a lighter side. Yeah. Yeah. But, what did Holt say? So Nicholas Holt, um, really great podcast uh, that Michael Rosenbaum hosts. And this is why it came oh. up. So Michael Rosenbaum, of course, played Lex Luthor on Smallville um, to quite some acclaim for 10 years. And he had Nicholas Holt on as a guest talking primarily about his upcoming role in Superman. And Holt basically revealed that he was, I think, 11 or 12 years old when Smallville debuted. And so that is the first, that was actually the first incarnation of Lex Luthor he ever saw on screen. He saw that show before he saw the Donner version. And so he kind of told Michael Rosenbaum, he's like, you know, to me, you're, you're the Lex that I kind of grew up with. And you're the one that I sort of have looked to for inspiration. And Gunn has kind of said this too. He's kind of hinted at the idea that like where Rosenbaum was taking the younger Lex isn't necessarily that far off of maybe where he would want to take Lex in a, you know, in an older, older iteration. Yeah. Um, because Rosenbaum played him almost like if you've ever seen the show, like he plays it like Clark's well-meaning, but poorly principled friend initially. And then they gradually, he gradually breaks bad further and further as the show goes sure. on. But you never, because it's Smallville, the show, you never see a fully realized Lex, A, because they never wanted a fully realized Superman, and B, because Michael Rosenbaum left the show after season seven. He didn't actually finish the journey. He came back for one cameo in the, in the series finale. Um, and the show was really never the same after he after he departed. But most of the time he was on the show that they were, Clark is a high schooler in Kansas. Uh, and, and Lex's dad is actually kind of, that relationship between Lex and his dad and Clark and Jonathan is how the show really works uh, in mm -hmm. those in those early years. Um, but Holt kind of pointed to that as as sort of a little bit what he's drawing on for the part. But then he said something else which no one picked up on. And you got to listen to the whole show. Because mm -hmm. they're in studio, I guess, and, my, and Rosenbaum asked him, hey, like, looks like you've been working out. And he says, yes. And he's like, if you remember... There's a line in All-Star Superman where Lex basically has committed himself to sort of physical perfection and basically is like, well, I wasn't given any of this. So I went out and worked for the, the strength and the physique and the muscles that I have. And so he's like, I've taken that to heart for my version. I thought that was really interesting. I, I like that, Brian. Because again, it is a, Lex Luthor, he bags Lois, yo. <laughs> we got to believe that. We've never seen a version of Lex where it's believable almost, other than Smallville, right? Other it, it, than, it, uh, yeah. And the, and the animation. Uh, so, uh, although in Smallville, it's Lana that's the object of his yes, affection yes, because yes, of the yes. age, not, yes, not Lois. Yeah, 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 um, yes, yes. But yeah, and the animated series. where uh, so, so I agree. I mean, quite honestly, like I said, Rosenbaum was the only live action... Well, I shouldn't say that because we did get a live action Lex in Superman and Lois at the end that was like sadistic and older. But I was going to say like we the, the big screen Lexes have not really been serious characters. Hackman's not. Spacey's just riffing on Hackman. And then Eisenberg's basically playing Mark Zuckerberg <laughs> with a twist. Like, so we've never really seen anyone in the movie that I could think of really attempt Lex the way he's written in the comics. So, yeah, I it, but I, that All Star Superman comment was the one that really actually got my attention. This idea that like he views the, they're going to take that theme of Lex pursuing his own physical perspective, and that's kind of what leads him 
someone into conflict with Superman. Rosenbaum and Smallville always believed he was doing the right thing for the greater good of Earth, always. The character always operated from that standpoint. And I might suspect Nicholas Holt will be thinking and doing the same. Yeah, that, and that'll be certainly interesting to watch in terms of his interaction with, with Clark, interaction with Superman. That in, Those interactions are pivotal, Brian. Pivotal, let's see how that turns out. Holt also said, by the way, the audition process was pretty insane. He said it sounded, it was real. Like we heard about this with regard to Supergirl, but he was saying that like, it was a pretty old school, like, you know, they had to read a lot. It was like, you had to, you had to test for the part. Like, it wasn't like, hey, they call the agent, will you do it? It was like, he had to go get the part. Um, Cause he then started telling the stories about other auditions he had done uh, in, in the past. So he said the craziest one was Mad Max Fury Road. Uh, George Miller, he said, had him doing all sorts of weird exercises and tests for like five hours. And he's like, he's like, and he's not even the lead in that. And he was like, well, he's like, well, if I didn't get the part, at least I learned something about how auditions go. But he said this one was a very classic Hollywood. Like you read a lot, you play a lot, you play off the other actors. And yeah, you, you go head to head with other people. So speaking of old school, no Comic Con, Brian. I put a question mark on this. I put a question mark on this when I sent it to you because James Gunn was asked on social about, are you excited for Comic-Con? And his only response was, quote, I'll be shooting, meaning Superman Legacy, which is filming now, will still be, still be in photography. First off, that's a pretty long shoot, if that's true, because that's the start of March to the end of July. That's a five month. That would imply he would be at the end of month five of shooting. It's pretty long. But I kind of put a question mark, a little asterisk around this for two reasons. Number one is he didn't say he wasn't going. He just said he was shoot, like it would be during shooting. That's not a totally a no. He would be on is, set. Yeah. Like he, he's no, these people are notorious. He's notorious for the little, like I didn't lie, but I didn't tell you the full truth. The mm -hmm. second reason I, I would asterisk is again, this thing, David Zaslav saying they're doing something. They're doing some kind of event with ah. a full DC update. So I could see a scenario where they don't go to Comic-Con because they're doing their own thing. And that's where you get all the info. I, I mean, we don't have any details, but that's the other thing I, in the back of my head was like, well, they're doing something. It just may not be in San Diego. I was hoping it was more towards the idea, Brian, of going back to the good old days when you saw almost everything on screen and you didn't know what was happening, but you know that this is going to be a dope movie. You seen the trailer, but you don't, you know, you get the gist. The more now or less, you, you already, you know, it's all over the place. And he wants to bring back that, that, that feeling that to see it in this, in its purest first time. You know what I'm saying? That's the way I want to sort of receive it. I'm too, I really, I want to just read people. I don't want to see nothing. I might not even not watch right. the last trailer. I will certainly yeah. watch the teaser and I probably will watch yes, the yes, first yes, yes, full yes, yes. trailer, but I'd be worried that the last full trailer will show too much. I, I might actually not watch that. Usually they do like teaser, full trailer, super full trailer, final trailer. I may not watch the final trailer for that movie. Yeah, 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 me neither. What, so you're saying you're not going to see the final one, right? But what will be your approach in terms of consumption of uh, information? I'll try to stop. I, I mean, at some point, I think I'll put a, I'll put like a moratorium on it, leading up to the, leading up to the film. I'll obviously I do what I always do with reviews, uh, which is, I don't, reactions I don't really don't care about. That's always overhyped and whatever. But reviews I'll probably I be James Gunn stuff. Reviews, I'll look at the tape. I always look for the themes, like what are people liking or not liking because it doesn't give away what's going on in the movie. Like, like what performances are standing out? Are the effects standing? Like things like that. But no, like like I said, because if we see a teaser in a full first full trailer, we'll have plenty of a sense of the visual aesthetic, how Superman looks and acts. Some hopefully some you know some shots of Lex, Lois, and Superman in, in, in various combinations. That's all I need. Yeah, that's all I need. I, I don't need. I don't need to see like the the set pieces. Yeah. By the I'm, way, they got a good Perry White. 
I'm a I'm a big oh, yeah. Wendell, I'm a big Wendell Pierce guy. Every everything that guy ever touched from Bunk Moreland to more recently Jim Greer on the Jack Ryan series, he's an awesome character actor. Yes, 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 yes. Very charismatic and he's always great in whatever he has been in. He's in My Wife and Kids. He's in a, in a few couple of episodes. <laughs> he's he's hilarious and he's charismatic. He was in The Wire. He's been he, he does it all, man. That guy's Single best scene, in my opinion, and I'm you know the wire has a lot of great scenes. My favorite scene in the wire is him and Jimmy McNulty doing a crime scene evaluation where they use nothing but the f word. I think it's incredible. It's five <laughs> minutes of two guys saying nothing but f and mother f. You get exactly what they're doing as detectives. It's amazing. You can find it on YouTube. All right, <laughs> I'm gonna take a look at that. But yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of what has been what has transpired with Superman. Because Brian, we have to just spend just one minute on the renaming of this movie. Is basically he said this is Superman. Forget drop the legacy. This is Superman. Yeah. How do you feel about that? That's good. It's confident. <laughs> right? It's confident. It's just saying because yeah. technically there it, the other one is Superman the movie, right? Yes. It officially, if you look at the yes, box, yes, there's yes, Superman yes, yes, colon yes, yes, the movie. So there's never yes, been a movie just called Superman. Yeah. Why mess around? Let us know in the comment section below what you guys feel so far about Superman. <laughs> I was going to say the movie, but, <laughs> but tell us what you guys think about Superman because everything we're hearing is exciting especially when it comes from james gunn he's setting the bar he's setting the bar brian if he is able to do that brian marvel got a long road ahead of them brother they're, they're Long all in. road. They're all in. So you get Superman and Batman Part Two within four months. If they hit both, there's no way they're losing 2025. No jam report. The show goes on. Yeah!